what the cosmic background microwave radiation is and why you study that and how that enables us to peer back really to as close to the beginning of time as we can manage. So the cosmic microwave background is the leftover heat from the fusion of the very first elements on the periodic table of the elements. So the lightest elements in the universe are hydrogen and helium, and they have isotopes. Each one has a couple of different isotopes, meaning they have more or fewer neutrons in their nuclei. These are not atoms though. These are just the nuclei of what would eventually become the chemical elements and atoms. So the nuclei are fused in the first few minutes of the universe, of our current observable universe. I have to be very precise here. We can't say the Big Bang was the beginning of time. We don't know that. Most people assume that the universe, with the universe's origin, with the Big Bang, came the beginning of time. That raises all sorts of, of hairy paradoxes that are really uh, quite difficult to approach both from the laws of physics perspective, but even from metaphysical perspectives. How does time come into existence when there was a moment before that existence was even possible? Can you even conceive of such a thing? How do you get the motive change, the motive force, if you will, to go from X to delta, X plus delta, or T plus delta T, if there was no time at the, at the zero point? So these are metaphysical questions, and I should say, say there are many eminent and serious cosmologists who do speculate what would the universe look like if there wasn't a quantum singularity at the origin of time, that there were no origin of time, if you will, whatsoever. And you've spoken to some of them, Roger Penrose and others, but the point being that there are alternatives to that. Now, 99% of my colleagues don't really pay much attention to those models, but I think it's important to at least not give the impression that we know for certain the universe had a quantum gravitational singularity that sprang time into existence. As you said before, you know, there's infinitesimal amount of space, and in that space was all the matter in the universe. Jordan, we don't know that. That is a possibility. And in fact, that's the most popular possibility amongst my colleagues. But again, I'm an experimentalist. I don't come up with these theories. I try to prove these theories wrong. So one of the things that I'm doing with the cosmic microwave background, because it is the oldest light in the universe, and because if you think about the motor homunculus of a human being, we get most of our kind of attention, our cortex, our brain pays attention to light, the visual cortex, and also our hands and our motor, you know, our motor system. And you know this infinitely better than I do, Jordan, but light is such a powerful tool that we should do everything we can to exploit all the information and these precious few photons that are still left over, they're still coming to us, they're still saying, hello, here I am, I am a relic fossil, and I've traveled through time like a time machine. To get to your telescope here in Chile or Antarctica, 